Good afternoon. Welcome to the first of many Show Me My Future sessions presented by the Missouri Association of College Admission Counselors. My name is Michelle Arashi and I am the facilitator here in St. Louis. Thank you students and parents for joining us today. Um, I have just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started with our panelists. Uh, first of all, to ask questions, students, families, you will use the question and answer session or question and answer button on your um, control panel. And you'll be able to type your questions into that. The uh, panelists will be providing some information and then towards the end of the session, they will be answering your questions. So we will get to as many questions as we can. If we're not able to get to your question, don't worry. The panelists will um, receive your questions and your contact information and they can follow up with you individually with your questions. This is a webinar, which means that your camera and microphone are turned off throughout the entire session. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So again, you do wanna type in your questions into the Q&A box. Uh, as a reminder, this is one of just many different sessions that are occurring over the next four weeks. So be sure to check out the full schedule at the moacac.org website. And again, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available on the moacac.org website here in the next few days. So for now, I would like to turn it over to our presenters. All right, thank you so much. So hi, I'm Allie Hamilton. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Rhodes College. I am joined today with four of my colleagues at other liberal arts schools across the South, and I'm gonna have them introduce themselves in just a moment. But before I do that, I wanna introduce the concept of our presentation today. So instead of doing sort of a round robin quick introduction to our schools, we've each decided to select three words that we think are integral to our campus communities. And we're gonna spend just a little bit of time explaining each of those words. So we hope that you get a little bit of a snapshot, uh, it's not a snapshot of our community and to um, what we provide um, and kind of whet your appetite for who we are as an institution. Um, as I want to remind you guys again to use your Q&A uh, box to in engage with us. We will hold some time at the end to um, answer your questions as much in person. And I also want to encourage you all to think about um, engaging with us in many other ways through virtual visits or high school visits or interviews. And we'll have some um, information for you at the end to share a little bit more about how you can continue to engage with us and continue the conversation. So uh, before we jump in, I'm going to have my colleagues introduce themselves, and I think we can just go in the order of alpha order. So we'll go Furman, um, Rollins, Swanee, and Trinity. So Zach, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, everyone. It's so glad that I can join y'all today. So glad to be here. Hey, I'm not meeting with y'all in person, but still very fortunate to be meeting with you. Regardless, um, like I was saying, my name is Zach Couch. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Fermi University, also a graduate, uh, graduate of 2019. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brooke Adams, and I am uh, a representative from Rollins College, which is down in Winter Park, Florida, just north of the city of Orlando. Um, I'm also a Rollins grad, actually a double grad, both my undergrad and master's from there, and um, absolutely in love with the college. Originally, I'm from the Midwest, so I'm, I always love getting to know students from the Midwest and um, teaching you a little bit about our great gem of the South. Good afternoon, my name is Lisa Burns. I'm the Associate Dean of Admission at Swanee, the University of the South. We're located in Swanee, Tennessee, which is equidistance between Chattanooga and Nashville. So I look forward to spending some time with you all this afternoon. And hi everybody, my name is Hillary Everts. I'm one of our Assistant Directors of Admission at Trinity University, located in sunny San Antonio, Texas. Awesome. So uh, again, we're thrilled to do this and I'm going to go ahead and have us jump right in to our questions. So um, again, we kind of have them randomized and, and there'll be three a piece. Um, so we'll start with Spark Day. Yeah, so Spark Day is um, one of Rollins College's words, and Spark Day is our annual day of service. So one of the um, crucial pieces of our mission statement is to create 
responsible leaders. And so one of the great ways to become a responsible leader is to participate in community service. So it's actually one of the first things that you'll do as a new Rollins student is participate in a day of service where you and your classmates will go out to one of our local community partners in Orlando and do some community service. One of the great things about that day is we all return to campus at the end of the day and share a meal together and kind of talk about who you are working with, what kind of service you did. Um, and it's just a great way to spark your interest in community service and hopefully want to continue that service throughout the rest of your four years at Rollins. It's something that we really pride ourselves on and um, is really crucial to the mission of the college. All right, next we have Domain. Yes, that would be Swanee. Um, we refer to our campus as the domain of the University of the South. So if you can imagine 13,000 acres is what we have as, as our campus, as our classroom, as our living and learning space. Um, located on a mountaintop, we consider it a mountain. It's about um, 2,200 feet elevation. And part of living on the domain is having access to 51 miles of hiking trails, caves. We have 11 lakes. Um, we have lots of different tree species, animal species. Um, yesterday morning they had a bird watching class that was happening. Um, you could work at the university farm. Um, you could ride horses. Our new vice chancellor actually is very excited about his equestrian opportunities on campus. Um, but it also means you're living with everyone else who lives at Swanee in the town of Swanee. So our students are quite committed to community engagement, tutoring, working at the food bank, helping out with the community orchestra, making sure that things are happening, happening civically as well as involved with things that are happening on campus. Recognizing that we are in some ways in the middle of nowhere on this mountaintop in Tennessee. And so we have a pledge to all students that we will fund one summer internship as well as um, a very affordable study abroad opportunity. So as much as we love to have our students come to campus, we're also finding ways for them to leave the domain at some time during their four years um, through the, the Swanee Pledge. All right, next is Upstate. All right, so Upstate is a Furman word. Um, it refers to the location that we are sitting in. So Furman University is located in wonderful Greenville, South Carolina, a very up and coming city um, around the US, fourth fastest growing city in the nation right now. It is a wonderful place to be and we're so lucky as Furman students to have that. Um, it's a beautiful place for just fun and enjoyment. Um, tons of different restaurants. I haven't even visited all of them downtown and they're always growing and there's always something new. Um, so it's a lot of fun to be able to be there for that. But there's also a lot of professional opportunities as well. We have partnerships with over 200 different businesses, companies, and anything else that you can imagine that are just there right for the taking for you to be able to create some kind of connection with. So there's a beautiful place for Greenville, wonderful opportunities there. Um, but the whole upstate as a whole for South Carolina is another wonderful opportunity as well. Going out and hiking, um, using a lot of the trails that are located there um, because we are situated just right at the base of the Blue Ridge mountain range in South Carolina. So a lot of wonderful opportunities to get out, enjoy, have fun, um, but also work and do well in that. Okay, the bridge. So this is a Rhodes word actually. And this is a great way to sort of share with you a little bit about our community service at Rhodes. About 80% of our students will take part in community service while they're at Rhodes. Um, it's nothing that we require. So I think that really speaks to the kind of um, just motivation that students have in general to give back to the community around them. Um, our location in Memphis aids in big ways to allow for students to take part in a lot of different community service. So the bridge specifically is a newspaper that was um, initiated by students. So it's a fully run student uh, enterprise. And it's a publication that happens every month. Um, the content is generated by the students and they publish it in house and they distribute it to members of the homeless community so that they can sell a dollar a piece for an income. Um, so it's a neat way to sort of uh, support the community around. Beyond the bridge, there's a lot of wonderful partnerships with the college and the city. Um, we have great partnerships with Church Health, uh, which does a lot of excellent health care services um, for the community around us. We have partnerships with the Refugee Empowerment Program, the REP. Um, 
And, and then beyond that, many other opportunities for students to take their learning in the classroom and to really put it into practice in the city around them. We find that this really enhances their education and it's something that helps inform their study, um, their graduate study, and maybe even sometimes their career choices beyond. All right, next we have the river walk. The river walk is one of Trinity's words and we would be remiss if we talked about Trinity and we didn't talk about our beautiful home in San Antonio, Texas. And so one of the things that often gets equated with San Antonio is the river walk and the missions. If you've ever heard of the Alamo or if you remember the Alamo, that is about 10 minutes from our campus location. And so San Antonio is this wonderful bustling city. When I think of San Antonio, the first words that always come to mind are rich and vibrant with so much history and culture and opportunities right in our own backyard. So Trinity is really fortunate that we are an urban campus setting. We are right in the heart of the seventh largest city in the United States, but we're still a fully residential campus feel. And so you can go five to 10 minutes in one direction on the highway and hit downtown in the Riverwalk, and you can have five to 10 minutes in the other direction and hit the airport. I don't know about y'all, but growing up in a North Texas town or in any city, in Missouri, in Kansas, anywhere across the United States, it's pretty rare to have an airport that you can get to within 10 minutes of your hometown. And so that's something that we really take advantage of. And then also too, San Antonio and the Riverwalk are home to so many wonderful opportunities, a number of Fortune 500 companies, major corporations like HEB, USAA, Valero. And if you're a fan of the San Antonio Spurs or any national basketball team uh, or NBA team rather, you have that opportunity right in your own backyard. All right, moving on to guaranteed access. So guaranteed access um, is a Furman word. So what this refers to is what we are trying to do for you um, as far as experiences and opportunities at Furman University. So something that you're going to hear about and continue to hear about when thinking about Furman is what's called the Furman Advantage. And what that is at its core is a four year um, pathway to graduation and it's gonna be individualized specifically to you, the student. So all the things that you're dreaming of about college and what experiences and opportunities you wanna come and have, we're gonna be able to give that to you at Furman and that goes through that guaranteed access. So making sure you have the opportunity to go and find a study away trip, a research opportunity, an internship, whatever it might be, finding that and getting you from point A to point B to have an incredible experience. So that means coming in as a freshman, meeting with some advisors um, that first year to where you might not get that experience that first year, but building those relationships, building those characteristics, finding exactly what pathways you're searching for and looking for, and getting you to those before your four years are up. Great. And I want to just, uh, again, remind our guests that if you have any questions about our institution specifically, or just in general about admission and liberal arts, Feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll make sure that we get to them at the end. Okay, our next question is Angel on a gown. Yes, that would be a Swanee Angel, um, perhaps wearing a gown. And so um, Swanee is full of traditions. Um, some of them have been around forever and some of them were, were building new traditions even this, this year as we invited our students to come back to campus and about 90% of our students are on campus with us. And I think one of the new traditions is that they all brought their own camp chair. So it's not unusual to see a student walking to and from class with their camp chair tagged onto their backpack because they might just find a good spot to sit down or they might have a class in an outdoor tent and find their own chair to be more, um, more comfortable to them. So I'm sure there's some new tradition that's being born as, as we speak. Um, the Swanee Angel has been around for a very long time and we like to say that why wouldn't an angel live on our campus because it is such a lovely, a lovely place. And while you're on our campus, you are protected by a Swanee angel. And the tradition is that when you leave, you tap the roof of your car and that angel then is with you while you're away, away from campus. Haven't figured out how to yet have that angel find um, a vaccine, but we're, we're working on that. Um, the gown is about our academic tradition of students being awarded an academic gown as you would think of a traditional sort of commencement gown. Um, and the first time they're awarded that is the first semester of their sophomore year. In fact, this ceremony happened just last Friday out on the quad 
Um, everyone was socially distanced. Students all had their masks on. The faculty were up on the second floor of buildings peering out over the students while they were presented with their gown. Um, they don't have to wear it, but boy, if I earned it, I certainly would wear it because it shows my, my academic um, preparedness and the work I'm doing in the classroom. Um, you never zip the gown up. Um, that's super uncool. And you only call it a gown. You don't call it a robe or any, anything else. Um, some students may get their gown as a sophomore. Some may need to take till their junior year. But everyone is certain to have their gown at senior year as they're passing the comprehensive exam that is required for a student in, in their major. Um, so when they complete their studies in their senior year comprehensive exam, um, they will then, that's the final time they can receive their gown. Um, I always think it's funny when you look at commencement and you'll see a student who, you know, received that gown as a freshman and maybe threw it in their backpack and never took it out again until commencement day and it's all wrinkled and tattered. Some of them are passed down from family members and friends and former teachers. So where you would think of commencement being this very regal event and a very serious event, you know, you'll see students in all different kinds of gowns that have sort of been part of their life during their time, time at Swanee. And they use them, they individualize them, they might put their initials or different clubs, organizations that they're involved in. So if you could just pause for a moment and mag imagine an angel wearing a gown on our 13,000 acre campus. That's where this term comes from. Thanks, I love that, Lisa. Um, so moving on, this is a Rhodes word. This is Bluff City. Um, and that describes Memphis. So Memphis is known as the Bluff City. We were uh, founded on a bluff on the Mississippi River. And it is a city that adds so much energy and um, extra, I think, to your college career and, and experience. Um, the way you heard Trinity describe that, we also have that similar um, relationship with our city for our students. Um, so Memphis is a city that is rich in history, um, civil rights, of music history. It's got a rich food culture. Um, we have major sporting events, um, you know, festivals, and all of these things are really just in the orbit of a five to, min five to ten minute drive for our students. Um, so while we sit in this really lovely 100 acre residential space um, in the middle of, of the city, which is Midtown, um, you've got access to all of these incredible, um, you know, vibrant cultural things to do for entertainment or um, even to advance your studies. So the fact that we're located in a city is something that, that we love. It's a thing that our students come to us for. Um, and it is in a, number, in a number of ways, it really sort of enhances the college experience. Um, one quick illustration to show you a little bit about that. Just across the street is a park called Overton Park, and it's actually really similar to uh, Forest Park in St. Louis in the sense that it's got a zoo and some museums and an art museum, um, you know, running and walking trails. And then there's an amphitheater there too. It's called the Levitt Shell. And uh, the Levitt Shell is historic and significant because Elvis, performed um, his very first paid concert there. Um, and there's this lovely story where he only had three songs and uh, he finished his set and people were yelling at him to encore and he thought they were booing him because the acoustics were so bad, he couldn't tell. And then he just came back out and started playing the same three songs over and over again. Um, so that stage is, is you know, re-engineered and it sounds great these days. And there are now free concert series that go on all summer and fall long. Um, but Rose actually gets a special night on that stage every fall and our, you know, our students who are engaged in music, um, and chorus and ensembles get to perform on that stage. Um, and it's something that, that we love, that we feel that connected um, to the city and to its history. Okay, Fox Day. Yes, Fox Day is a Rollins word. Um, it is our favorite tradition that we have on campus. It's been going on for well over 100 years. Um, and it's basically a surprise day. No one knows except the president when Fox Day is going to arrive. Um, it's a day in the spring where the president determines that it's just too nice outside to have class. So um, we cancel classes for the day and students have so much to take advantage of. There's um, a DJ down at the pool. There's there's usually a floating obstacle course out on the lake. Um, there's 
water slides and rock climbing walls and all sorts of fun things to do on campus. Some students will take advantage of our location and take off and go to the beach for the day. Um, some students will go to Disney World or Universal Studios for the day. So it's just kind of a free day for you to enjoy. Um, one of the best things about Fox Day, in my opinion, is when all of the students return from wherever they decided to go that day, and we all have a huge barbecue together out on the lawn, so the faculty, the staff, and the students all come together um, and, and enjoy a barbecue together. So it's a, it's a really great day for um, kind of camaraderie and fellowship, uh, but also just a really fun day. Because students never know exactly when it's going to be, they like to try to guess. So it's funny to see students kind of set up tents and hammocks out on the lawn to kind of camp out the night before they think it might be Fox Day. Um, and what happens is the president rolls out a statue of a fox and puts it on our lawn at about 6 a.m. So when that fox arrives, we know that it's Fox Day and that all of the classes are canceled. So students either rejoice in the morning or they get burned because it wasn't actually Fox Day and now they have to go to class. Uh, so it's our, it's our most favorite day of the year. We look forward to it every spring. All right, constructive collisions. Alrighty, this is a Trinity word. And so one of the beautiful things about all of our institutions is that we're liberal arts schools. And one of the key pillars and sort of monikers of a liberal arts institution is that you as a student have the flexibility to really dig deep into your academic curriculum and become incredibly well-rounded, not only in just your desired area or path, but also in other things that interest you as well. And so one of the really incredible things is that at Trinity, you don't have to declare your major until two years in. And you've got all of this time to explore different academic curriculum across different sectors. And so once some of our students are involved in neuroscience and music, or languages and business in the STEM field. And so you have all of these opportunities to truly explore and never be siloed into just one academic area of understanding. Um, but with that also comes hands-on learning. We are very, very intent on giving you those opportunities to pursue research and internships as soon as you set foot on campus. Because what good is learning if you're not gonna put it into action? And so we definitely give you that opportunity um, to dig deeper within your professor's research labs or researching anything that you choose and also having those internship experiences as well. Um, but our whole point is that we want you to have these constructive collisions across your interests to truly help develop you into what it is you wanna become when you leave and you cross the stage and you leave our doors. I love that term. That's a really great way of describing it. Okay, Laking. All right, so Laking is Furman's final word. Uh, this is one of our most favorite traditions around campus, and I'll touch on a couple, uh, but this one in particular is very fun because it is centered around probably one of the big staples of Furman's campus whenever you see it. Um, just our large lake with the bell tower in the distance. A wonderful place for students to go utilize, sit outside, and have fun doing that. Um, but laking refers to a tradition that happens on your birthday. So if you're fortunate enough to have friends that figure out exactly when your birthday is, and they are bound and determined, and they will take you down to the lake um, before your birthday is over and toss you right in. Um, this happened my first year when I was there when I told my friends it would never happen. And then they recruited some football players to come and actually toss me in. And there was no way I was getting out of that. Or, you know, it really depends on, doesn't even really depend on when your birthday is. Like when we threw my friend in the lake uh, when there was still snow on the ground on Herman's campus, actually. Um, so if you have some friends that are determined to do it, you're gonna go in. But that's just one of them. Um, another one that we love on campus is our senior year fountain pool party. Um, so on the last day of class, um, seniors basically take it off, classes aren't canceled, but it's kind of just the tradition for the Furman seniors to go out to one of our big fountains on campus. Um, Furman brings out beach balls, pool floats, um, vendors, and all of these things to just have this large celebration as you finish classes for the final time as a senior at Furman. And you just get to go and have this large pool party with all the people that you've been spending your time with. So it's really funny that a lot of our traditions surround water, um, but they're also just a lot of fun and very enjoyable and things to look forward to whenever you come to campus. 
Okay, St. Jude, this is another Rhodes word and our final Rhodes word as well. Um, so St. Jude is, a, I'm sure as you guys know, world-renowned children's research hospital that's located and headquartered in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's about a five to seven minute drive from our own campus. We have a incredible partnership with St. Jude for our students who are interested um, in medical research. So um, there's quite a few students who come to Rhodes because they're interested in the health professions. Um, we have a really robust program in helping students um, connect with health professions beyond Rhodes. So if that's med school or dental school, vet, nursing, PT, on and on and on. Um, we have some excellent scaffolding in place to help you pursue that passion. And, you know, one of the beauties of being a liberal arts school, just like my colleagues here, is that you don't have to major in, you know, a very specific track to make it into med school. You could major in psychology or you could major in English. Um, you could major in biology. Any of those things are viable pathways um, to, you know, to your next step to med school if that's what you choose. St. Jude is something that's really popular among our students um, in a number of ways, and I'll, I'll share a little bit about um, those, but the most popular one would be the research partnership that we have with them. Um, so students apply to this, and it's the far and away the most competitive thing that we have, but if, if selected, they get to work side by side at the bench um, researching whatever it is that our re the researchers at St. Jude are investigating. Um, so this is cutting edge, you know, top of the line cancer research that our undergraduate students, these 20 year olds, get firsthand, you know, work with and knowledge of. It's an 18 month partnership um, and it's incredible if you're thinking about kind of uh, moving on into med school and having that on your resume really it's just unparalleled. Um, so a couple other partnerships that I'll mention in the city um, that we that we really enjoy for our students are one with Le Bonheur. That's another hospital in the city. It's a children's hospital and it's got a neuroscience focus to it. Um, the zoo across the street that I already mentioned, we have many students who will do um, research over there with the animals. Um, they can literally walk across the street and fob in and start their research. So um, we enjoy a really rich um, partnership with a number of, of different incredible um, institutions across the city that really benefit our students in big ways through research. All right, renewable resources. This is a Trinity word and our final word for our time together today. And so one of the things that we want to make sure we do as an institution is we have the resources to match your expectations once you get to our campus. And so as I talked about with constructive co collisions, um, we firmly believe in hands-on learning, having those applied learning opportunities to truly make sure that you have access to the resources, both human and financial resources to help you thrive in your college experience. Um, and so we're fortunate to have things like be an all Steinway campus. And so if you're passionate about music, we have 43 Steinway pianos, which are equated to a Ferrari of a car, if you will, on campus that all students have access to. You can start pursuing that research and internship as soon as your freshman year. Um, we are very fortunate to have a $1.4 billion endowment for our student body population. That means that we can support you through financial aid as well as the resources available on campus um, to make sure that you have those opportunities. But also with that come the support services to make sure that you thrive in college because college is a new experience. It's the first time you're living away from home for many students and you are in complete control of your schedule. You decide what you study, when you eat, when you sleep, when you work out, when you do your laundry. It can be a lot of not just academic transition, but also social and emotional transition too. And so we have services and support systems in place to help you learn the ropes of what it is to be a young adult and be in college. So we have our Student Success Center, which helps students with time management, organizational skills, study habits, the sort of how-tos, if you will. We've got our Center for Experiential Learning and Career Success, which in its name ties you directly with research experience as well as job shadowing or career services opportunities. And then also 
International Cultural Center. So many of our students, more than 40% of our students study abroad in their time in college and they become culturally aware of the world around them. And then 10% of our students are international students coming from countries all over the world. And so having the supports in place and the renewable resources to make sure that your time, your four years in college, as well as beyond are impacted and beneficial. beneficial. Excuse me. All right, global citizenship. Global citizenship is the final word for Rollins. And um, I mentioned at the very beginning that part of our mission statement is to create uh, responsible leaders. But the second part of our mission is to create um, global citizens. So there's a lot of ways to become a global citizen, obviously. One of the ways that you'll do that is just by being a part of our student body. Um, our student body is a very diverse student body. We have 10% um, of our students are international students. Um, we boast a 30% domestic diversity on campus. So you're going to meet people from all over the globe just being a student here on campus. Um, but we are very proud of our study abroad opportunities. About 80% of our students will study abroad at least once before they graduate. That's how much we encourage our students to study abroad um, and how easy we try to make it for students. So any financial aid or scholarships that you're receiving are going to travel with you abroad. So the cost to study in, let's say, China for a semester should be the exact same cost as it would be if you were to stay on campus for that semester. Um, another great way to become a global citizen is to immerse yourself in a diverse city. And so Orlando is a very global city. Having a large international airport right in our backyard um, helps with that. And then, of course, the touristy parts of Orlando draw a lot of visitors from all over the world. Um, and because we're such a global city, we also have a lot of big name companies that have their headquarters right here in Orlando. So that lends itself very well to opportunities for internships and um, careers after you graduate right here in your backyard. You don't even have to leave. So global citizenship is a really Really big part of our mission as well as responsible leadership. All right and our final word is dinner, dinner table. It's not quite dinner time yet although I think a couple of us are on the eastern time clock so it might be a little closer to that but you know as I listen to my colleagues um, and I have had the opportunity to do panels like this with representatives from these schools before and, and every time I hear something new or interesting and I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love to go to that school. That would be the place that I could really call, call home for my four years of college. I'm not planning to apply to college, but those of you that signed on today are in that process. You're beginning to look, look at colleges, work on your application. And so the term here, dinner table, is how we at Swanee like to talk about the way we make our admission review of applications. And so students will complete an application, whether it's the Common App or the Coalition App, whatever it might be, and then it arrives in one of our offices. One of these people you see here on the screen today are responsible for reviewing that application and guiding the admission staff in the decision of who it is they would like to invite, as I say, to come and live with us for four years. We are all residential colleges on this panel today, and so we're not just inviting someone to you know, put their camp chair and take one class, we're gonna have them with us for four years. And so we come through that application that the student has submitted. So how are you going to best present yourself? What activities are you gonna tell us you're involved in? What is that recommendation letter going to say about you from a teacher, from a counselor? Um, what is that essay gonna tell us? You know, we think of the essay as a way for you to share with us what's going on in your head and in your heart. And so what are we learning from you with that particular essay? How are we getting to know you through the process? Um, are you signing up for a virtual counselor appointment, which we're all doing? Have you attended an event on campus before we weren't able to host people on campus? You know, what are you doing to learn about, about our campuses? So then imagine, and we have the luxury because we've got this ginormous campus, imagine a table running down the center of University Avenue that has 500 seats at it. And that's the size of our freshman class. So as we're all reading our applications and I'm reading a particular student and I see that they're involved in um, sustainability at our high school. I actually worked with the student last year. Her name was Violet. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could imagine automatically see her sitting there talking with a young man named Ben, who I had met also at a high school, two different states. I thought, well, wouldn't they have an interesting conversation? And then I remembered another student and thought, ooh, let's put them across the way 
at that table and see what they've got to say. You know, this is an election year. So what's happening in that dinner table of our 500 freshmen, what they're sharing, what they're learning about each other, what they're learning about themselves. Um, and they're gonna spend those four years having those great conversations. Sometimes they're gonna be comfortable. Sometimes they're gonna be a little uncomfortable. And that's what going to college is all about, is to share some experiences. Um, I just sat, sat down on Friday on campus with a young woman who's a first year student and she was telling me about her four classes and just having a great experience. And she said, well, I'm taking a class, it's in children's literature. And she said, my parents didn't read to me as a young girl. She said, books were not really part of our life. And she said, here the first class, I was asked to sort of give my top books that I had read as a young child. And instead of feeling sorry for herself or feeling that she didn't have that same experience, she raised her hand and she shared the story of her life and her upbringing and had a chance to sort of share with her classmates, you know, sort of her perspective of things. That's what college is about. At these liberal arts colleges, we want you to participate, to be engaged, come outside of your comfort zone, and sometimes make others uncomfortable too. So if you think about that great dinner table conversation tonight, perhaps, or if you're invited over to someone's house and you have something to bring to that table, you're probably going to bring and receive all at the same time. And so as we're re reviewing those applications for admission, know that we are carefully trying to decide who's gonna get a seat at that table and who's gonna contribute something and who is also going to learn something while sitting at that particular dinner table. So hopefully you think enough of our schools to think, hmm, I think I might like to have dinner there at that particular institution. Fortunately, we've got a great dining service at Swanee so that you get to have a great meal too. But you want to find a place where you can really be part of that community. And we as admissions people are trying to present our schools so that you're finding a way to really find that good fit. And that's what it's about. And so the hope is that today we've had a chance to share some unique aspects of our schools and you might decide that it's time to have dinner at one of our institutions. Thank you, Lisa. So um, with that, we're, we're coming close to the end of our presentation today. I think that's a really lovely illustration of um, the admission process and what each of us are looking for. Ultimately, it's, it's somebody who we think would be a good, you know, dinner table, table conversationalist and who would fit with our community. So I think that's a lovely illustration to show that process. Um, since we have a few remaining minutes here at the end, I think it might be useful if each of us maybe describe ways that um, our viewers out there can engage with us moving forward. Um, what opportunities you guys have through visits or uh, events, um, so on and so forth. So maybe if we could go um, alpha order and we'll go, you know, Furman, Rhodes, Rollins, Swanee, Trinity, and talk about ways that students in Missouri can continue to, the conversation with us. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to be doing a lot um, online. You can catch us doing um, a lot of virtual information sessions as well as virtual tours. We haven't opened campus back up yet for regular tours, so that's what we're going to be doing. I will be doing my virtual travel all throughout the state. Um, so if I'm heading to your school, come and say hi. We'd love to meet with you. And then we're going to be doing a lot of other um, specific regional um, <clears throat> specific regional events uh, where you're going to be able to talk with students, talk with some faculty, talk with some alum, um, and then you can always just email me directly or reach out uh, to permanent admissions in general and set up a time to talk with me. I'd love to get a chance to chat with you. For Rhodes, it's very similar as well. Um, we are also doing a lot of virtual events. I am the counselor who works with all students in Missouri and have for many years. So while I'll not be coming physically to your high school, I will be doing virtual high school visits. Um, I will also offer some opportunities to do sort of a citywide event in the evening in St. Louis. So I'll include a panel of students who are current, current road students who come from St. Louis high schools um, and Kansas City high schools. That'll be a way for you all to, to see some current students who were in your shoes not long ago. Um, additionally, we'll have a number of open house events too that are hosted virtually. And lastly, we do have some on-campus visit options. So we are open as of this week for on-campus visitors, it's in small capacity. Um, so check our website for the restrictions on that um, and the guidelines around that. We also offer some self-guided tours as well. So if you feel like just being physically on our campus and in that space would be useful to you, we have a way for you to do that. 
at Rollins, very similar. We'll be doing um, virtual travel. We're hosting a Midwest Perspective student reception. So keep your eye out on your email for that, uh, for ways to connect with both admission and faculty and alumni um, in your area. We also um, have opened up for in-person tours. So if you're feeling a little stir crazy and you feel comfortable traveling, come on out to Orlando and uh, check out uh, the campus in person. If not, we have so many virtual options. You could do a, a, in, a info session. You could do a virtual tour. Um, you can also access our admission counselors calendars and schedule a one on one um, kind of conversation with us. So if you have very specific questions or you and your family would like to meet with me, um, you can just schedule an appointment right on my calendar and it's pretty easy. We tried to um, make it really easy for everyone to see all of the different opportunities that are out there for us. So it's just rollins.edu slash visit it and every single thing that we're offering is going to be right there on that one page. And I would say all the same virtual activities. However, we are not welcoming people to campus, which is so hard to do because we love to have everybody visit, um, but we're trying to keep our bubble safe. So our students are not even allowed to leave. So we are keeping campus um, very, very safe. We hope that after everyone goes home at Thanksgiving, when the semester is over, we will again open up for um, perhaps self-guided tours. But you know, the, the virtual part at one point, I think we were a little worried about, but I've had some great conversations. And what's nice too is it's on the time of the student. You haven't had to travel anywhere. And oftentimes it's the family gets on the call and we can get all those questions taken care of at one time. Um, and it's dedicated time to you. You don't have to elbow your way at a session on campus or you know, linger longer to get someone's attention. It's dedicated time you have for us. So please take advantage of that. And you know, I think we can't stress enough the importance of building a relationship with your admission counselor. And I would close us with much of the same. So lots of virtual opportunities. You can schedule one-on-one -on -one interviews or just conversations with myself. Similar to Allie, I am the counselor that works with all students from both Kansas and Missouri. And we'll be offering high school visits. I'll virtually show up in your Zoom room um, at some point in the next six to eight weeks. And then also we'll have citywide and statewide chat opportunities for y'all to join. If you are feeling bold and ambitious and you wanna come down to San Antonio, we are offering on-campus tours with lots of restrictions in place. So definitely make sure to read those carefully with you and your family. Um, and we're excited to have you, if, if, be it virtually or in person. Great. And so I, on our last slide, I'll just end here with some additional contact information. So if any of you all out there want to reach out, here are each of our um, email addresses. And then, of course, um, our websites where you can access some of those visit opportunities we were just speaking about. We appreciate you guys sharing your time with us today. Um, it's been really enjoyable getting to share a little bit about our campuses with you. I know I can speak for myself, but it, I have actually loved getting to see the faces of my colleagues that I normally get to see on the road, but don't right now. Um, so this has been a treat for me as well. So thank you. Um, we hope that you all are staying healthy and um, you know we look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you all so much, Hillary, Brooke, Allie, Lisa, and Zach. Thank you. It was a great session as a counselor who loves liberal arts schools. Um, I learned a lot too, and um, I've always been a fan of liberal arts schools. And so now I know more about the five of you to send my own students um, with uh, uh, great support to, to your institutions. And I love the creative way that you uh, showcase each of your institutions with the words that are meaningful to you. So students and families, thank you for joining us today. Um, and thank you for those who will be watching over the next several months uh, this fall. Again, this session is recorded and it will be hosted on the moacac.org website very soon. So you will be able to go back and uh, review it or share it with other students and families. 
Um, once we close here in a moment, there will be a quick survey for you students, just four quick questions. We'd like to get your feedback. So if you will stay on just a minute more and fill that survey, at, survey out for us, we would appreciate it. Again, you can also sign up for more sessions on our website. This is day one of four weeks. And many of these uh, institutions will be hosting individual sessions later on in um, the next four weeks. So please check it out, sign up for those sessions. Um, and again, I want to get once again, thank um, our five institutions for being with us on a Sunday afternoon and sharing uh, such great information. I uh, love that you're all test optional as well too. So um, this, is, this is the year. We love all the, the growth and test optional and, and the support. So again, thank you. I'm going to turn us, uh, turn us off for the afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and be safe.